I have two brief questions I'd like to ask, if I may. Hi, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brendan Malone, and you're watching The Daily Question. Today's question of the day, why is I in the Sky such an important movie? Now, the reason I'm asking that question is because over the weekend, my wife and I sat down on Saturday night and watched a film together. The movie we chose was the political thriller, Eye in the Sky, starring Alan Rickman and Helen Mirren, among others. It's a really good and engaging film. It's an enjoyable thriller. Uh, let me give you the scenario, because the scenario really is, it's a morality question that, that is explored in this film. Uh, it's about moral philosophy and how that plays out in the real world. But this is a really good dramatic thriller. Lots of tension. It keeps you invested from beginning to end. Well acted, well written. And as I said, really important because of the actual scenario and the question that it poses. So the scenario is this that, that takes place in this film. You have a situation where they, uh, a combined British and American force is on a drone operation in an African nation and they are targeting dangerous Islamic fundamentalists. And they have a house on the corner of this street in this African nation where they can see quite clearly that you have two suicide bombers who are being vested up with explosives and who are filming their final suicide bombing videos and it's almost certain that they're going to leave that house and carry out suicide bombings somewhere in that country uh, that are going to result in the deaths of, in this case they say about 80 people according to their um, casualty statistics. Now, they have a drone flying overhead which has missile capabilities and they can fire a missile into that house and they can eliminate that threat by doing that but here's the, the, the problem with this particular idea. Right in front of the house on the street out the front, there is a young, totally innocent girl who has set up a little store uh, to sell bread that her family makes. And their uh, estimates, uh, estimates around damage and, and casualties tell them that it's almost certain that she will be killed if they fire this missile into that house. So the question becomes, and this is where the tension arises in the film, should we fire the missile or not? Do we do this? What is the morally right thing to do? Now why this film is so important is because it explores the question of, or the moral philosophy of consequentialism. Consequentialism is a particular uh, type of utilitarianism which would say that you should look at a particular action and you should judge the rightness or wrongness of that action based on the consequences. And if the consequence of one of the options on the table is that it will bring about more pleasure than pain, it will maximize pleasure for a greater number of people than it will pain, uh, and it will uh, you know, reduce a greater level of pain in the world, then it would be okay to carry out that action. So in this case, if we fire that missile, even though we are going to kill an innocent young girl, which would be an evil thing to do, uh, the philosophy of consequentialism would say, well, that was, that's okay, because you got a, a better outcome. You, you saved 80 lives by doing that. You have reduced suffering, you have increased pleasure in the world, and therefore that makes that action okay. But there's some big flaws with consequentialism, and this film, this is why I think this film is so important, because it really starts to explore and ask these questions. First of all, there's a sort of a false hair trigger that they're under here that they have to take action. So the idea that is, is, is really driving them forward and everyone is, is, is being propelled by but not really stopping to question is we have to do something. But do they have to do something? Like if, you, if you've got no morally good option available to you to stop an evil in the world, the only way of stopping that evil and guaranteed way of stopping that evil is to do something evil yourself, like to kill an innocent girl then you don't have to do something at all. You are not responsible for the moral actions of those other people. So if those other people go and make a free will decision to go and suicide bomb themselves and kill a whole lot of people, you are not responsible for those actions. And if, if, if you're in a situation where you can't do something good to stop that, you, you've created a, like a false hair trigger, a, a false countdown time you've placed on yourself, which is made, uh, was trying to demand that you have to take action, you have to do anything. No, 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 no. You don't do anything to stop evil. You do good things or, or, or things that are morally acceptable in order to stop evil. It's not a matter of the end justifies the means. And that's exactly what consequentialism is, is proposing we do here. For the first time ever, when you look at moral philosophy, what consequentialism does is it actually tries to ground moral decision making in the future. And what it wants you to do is answer this question, 
what is going to be the outcome of your actions. And then you should make a determination about which action to follow based on a future outcome. Well, that's problematic because for two reasons. Uh, number one, if you can show that your actions in the future will lead to a good outcome, you can justify anything you want to. Any evil act at all can be justified as long as you can show that in the future there will be greater benefit by you carrying out that evil act. What consequentialism wants us to do is to forget about a very important component of moral philosophy and, and when it comes to moral decision making it's not just about the outcome. There's another important component here and that is the means, the method you use to get to that outcome. And what consequentialism wants us to do is to say that the end, the outcome, justifies the means. So if we get a good outcome, that makes the method that we got that outcome with okay. But that simply isn't true and it's extremely dangerous. Let me give you another example. Let's say in your society you wanted to do something, your government wanted to do something about the problem of poverty. There's a couple of different ways they could go about that. One way of, of, of reducing poverty in a society would be to implement good uh, you know, workplace training and education schemes and, and sort of stimulating the environment to create job growth. That's one way of reducing poverty in society. Another way of reducing poverty would be to actually eliminate all the poor people, to give them all lethal injections and to kill them. Now both of them, in fact you could argue that the lethal injection option is going to be much more efficient at reducing and solving the problem of poverty in your society. They both get the same outcome, right? but they're not the same moral thing at all. One is morally good and very admirable and something we should be striving for. The other is morally reprehensible and is something we should not be doing in our society at all. You should never ever kill an innocent human person. You should never deliberately take the life of another innocent human person. It's the most fundamental violation of human rights that you can, that you can perpetrate. It's, it's the, the gravest of the violation of human rights that you can perpetrate is to deliberately kill another innocent human person. So this idea that you should be looking to the consequence and then saying, well, the consequence is going to actually be really good benefit, therefore it justifies the actions, is a really, really dangerous way of actually doing moral philosophy. It's also the fact that you can't ever possibly know the future. You can't. What consequentialism is asking you to do is to make a decision based on something that you can't know for certain, which is the future. You can never know which of these options is actually going to bring about a, a greater consequence in these scenarios. Which one's going to bring about the more beneficial consequence. So in this film here, they put forward this sort of casualty estimate of, well, we can save uh, you know, approximately 80 lives if we, if we kill this little girl. It's okay for her life to be sacrificed uh, in order to, to save 80 other lives. But you see, you can't guarantee that at all. Let's imagine a different version of the scenario whereby you actually fire the missile, you kill these two suicide bombers, and so, look, we've saved 80 or so lives by doing that. Yes, we killed this young girl, but look, we got a better outcome. We saved 80 lives by doing that. Look, we've, we've won. The consequences were great. We, we did the right thing. However, what happens to that girl's parents? You can't know what's going to happen next. And quite conceivably, what happens is that girl's parents, who, by the way, in this film, don't want any part of this extremist Islamic regime. They are deliberately shown to be not part of that and not willing participants. And so what happens to that family? What happens to the father of that girl? What happens to her extended family? When they find out that their daughter, their innocent daughter, was killed knowingly by people who are supposedly there to help as well, what happens then to those people? It's highly likely that they are now going to end up becoming radicalized themselves, or if they don't become radicalized, that they are far greater targets or more likely to, uh, to be susceptible to radicalization. And so they could well end up radicalizing and then carrying out suicide bombings or terrorist acts of their own, which end up killing more people than 80 people that you think you've saved by carrying out this drone attack. You can never know the future. And so you should never really be using the future as the way of determining whether or not your actions right here and now are moral. And I would also say to you, think about this scenario. If you're tempted to say, oh, this is just what it is, it's the war on terror. Not only do you have to answer the question, well, is this a legitimate war on terror? I mean, you know, the big question, what are we actually even doing there in the first place? And how much of how our actions, and I mean our in the sense of the West, so America, Britain, France, everyone else who's had a stab at intervening in these countries, how much of those previous actions actually led up to this moment and created this very evil that we are now claiming to be the good moral crusaders against? 
So there's a, there's a real complex moral question there. But leaving that aside, there is the whole question of, imagine if this was your country and you were living in that country and there was an evil, oppressive, extremist, fundamentalist ideology that was victimizing your people in some way. And then an outside superpower came along and said, we're going to help. And the way we're going to help is, is we're going to fire missiles from drones. You don't even know when they're coming. And, and often we're going to end up killing totally innocent members of your society in the process. But trust us, we're here to help and we're doing this for your good. Often it's not really for their good, it's for our own good. We're doing it because we're trying to protect our borders rather than sort of freeing people or liberating them. But let's say it's being sold as this form of liberation. We're here to help. Do you really believe that people are going to buy that or accept that as a good outcome? If you were living in that society, would you really want that going on? I think most people would say, well, yeah, thanks for offering to help, but you're not actually helping here. Look, it's not nice and it's awful for us to have to live under this form of oppression, but we would rather not have someone who brings a solution where they're dropping missiles and killing innocent kids in the process. That That's not a good way of dealing with things as far as we're concerned because we're the people on the ground who have to live through this and it's our kids who are being killed by your actions. And this is why consequentialism, as I said, is just so dangerous as a moral philosophy. And this is why this film is so important, not just on this issue, but lots of issues where people are tempted to look at moral questions and say, well, what sort of outcome are we going to get? That's not how you do good moral decision making. As per usual, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know what you think in the comments section below. And if you like the content I'm creating and you'd like to see more of it, then please support me on Patreon or PayPal. The links for both are in the description below. That's right, I can hear my theme music too. I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily Question.